Hi, hello, greetings to everybody gathered here as part of our give back series to the society. This is myself, Kalina, the host for today's session, along with Arun Fernandez, the dyslexic thinker, who is also the founder of D Learners. Yeah. So, Arun, it took Edison 10,000 tries to perfect the light bulb. And when he was questioned on his failures, he has always responded saying, uh, I have never failed 10,000 times, but in fact found 10,000 different ways um, to bring out, you know, the perfect bulb. So as, as one such person, I get to see you who, as someone who's battled through, you know, all your challenges and you've come. As much as we enjoy binge watching series and movies, um, we now see that um, there are a lot, you know, you're not limited to watching movies in just your mother tongue. Rather, we get to expand uh, ourselves to different other languages. So how do you find it easy to watch a movie in a different language with a subtitle? Definitely subtitling will be a challenge wherein uh, uh, first you should, uh, the movie's genre you can follow and understand but not understand, uh, attempt to read uh, below. So why? Because that will actually be, uh, uh, it will go very fast as it is a recall in my classroom where a teacher uh, writes on the board and I'm not able to copy. And that is the same uh, nostalgic feeling I get. And uh, most of the parents today, you would have also uh, uh, come across this, why are you not copying from the board? Uh, that was the same scenario to a subtitled movie too. Why? Because you will not be able to copy from the board is because... Uh, the the a regular kid will uh, read from word to word and uh, phrases or sentences, but kids having uh, dyslexic thinking would be not be able to decode the word. So it, they will be kind of uh, doing it as uh, letter to letter, which means that uh, makes it very difficult for them to copy. So that's the same thing. A subtitle movie will also be uh, meaningless if I attempt to read and understand the movie. So yeah, the next question is that um, we see that you've changed a lot of schools and uh, what was the type of mindset that you had to develop and how did you feel, uh, you know, fine to adapt to new environments? So basically changing schools uh, is definitely uh, not an invited thing for any kid to go through. Why? Because you make friends in one particular environment and you are, uh, then you kind of settle there and then suddenly they will ship to another school. So what would be the reason is uh, your child is well behaved, your child is good and he is uh, playing good, in, uh, performing well in sports and everything. But uh, there is a problem in him, I think so, he is not able to read and write. So that was uh, the reason which I was sent to different schools. And that actually is a very, uh, how to say, very difficult situation to, when you get settled and you kind of see that you're sent another, to another school. That actually makes uh, the child, when I was a child that time, feeling very lonely and, uh, and feeling like, okay, I'm, I, I, there's something wrong with me. So that was the scenario, was, uh, uh, that's what I can recall now. So yeah, moving on to the next question. Were you able to explain or express the difficulty you faced when you found it very difficult to read or write back in school? So um, express in, yeah, express basically it is very natural that everyone understands that I'm not, I'm not able to read or write. Uh, so I myself also understand that. Uh, so the point is to explain to them is only the problem. Why? Because my mother or father or anyone around me, if they ask me orally, they I would be answering to them uh, in a perfect uh, ability. But when it, they ask to write is when there is a challenge. So initially it was always a problem uh, for me. Why? Because it... Uh, my mother would uh, teach me everything and on, uh, make me answer. It would uh, I'll answer her orally, but when you when uh, in the question paper, uh, the answer paper, when uh, the mark sheet comes, uh, that never reflects there. So that time, uh, teachers, uh, there might be a situation wherein that class teacher would be my tuition teacher too. 
So why did you not answer? I, I knew that you know that and why are you not writing it on the paper? And I leave it blank and come. So which that, that makes a huge, uh, uh, huge difficulty for anyone to explain in, the, in, in that age and so on. Uh, it was never easy to explain or uh, to make people understand. That's why I call this as an invisible uh, difficulty. If you are uh, kind of having a, anything, any physical form, uh, there is more empathy towards that individual. Uh, but when there is a uh, then then when there is visibly everything perfect and the child is actually doing everything uh, as uh, regular as other kids, that time this kind of explanation or this kind of uh, empathy uh, you can never ex expect. So that seems to be a lot of explanation and, you know, a difficult situation for you. And now moving on to the next, what do you think is your biggest fear or was your biggest fear? And did you ever have someone who you could confidently go and talk about this to? So the biggest fear is making uh, when I kind of have a, a situation uh, in classroom when the teacher is asking me to stand up and read. I think so. That is the biggest fear. Every morning I go to school praying that today I should just not get that opportunity to do so. But unlike my other peers will say, Ni read panne, na read panne. they'll be kind of having competition that I'm going to read today and so on. And I'm going to go read it in the, read in the assembly and so on. But for me, it was never my piece of cake to eat or something. Uh, what? Because... It was always a difficulty when uh, I can also recall at my uh, wedding uh, mass also I was supposed to read. So one week, <laughs> it was one week uh, practice I did and I did read, I did read well. But still, it is uh, it is always that that's that's I think so. Reading in public is a is a biggest fear. And even today, if you ask me to give a lecture extempo, superb, I can give. But if you ask me to read on a paper and answer all your questions, I think so, it will be a difficulty. But that does not uh, limit one person's ability is what uh, I always stand for. Yeah, and uh, just as you know how you face this very difficulty, people actually have a very negative aspect towards this very term, let it be uh, dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, you know, all those specific learning difficulties. How do you think we need to normalize this very thought or this wrong concept? So basically labeling is uh, something which is, uh, uh, which is more clinically useful only, not, uh, uh, not useful in a day-to-day -day life. Uh, but uh, there is a difference between an ability of an individual and a capability of an individual. So the ability of an individual is, I'm not able to read or write. That is just a skill is what I feel. But a capability is I'm running a company to, uh, uh, to kind of uh, help out the same kind of children outside. And, uh, and I'm able to kind of uh, pull resources to run the company. And, uh, and many things, whatever I'm doing today uh, is my capability. And whatever I've done uh, in my past, I was a lecturer, I was... Uh, I, I was uh, like whatever others questioned me whether I could be like for instance when I was in 10th um, there was a situation I used to have a scribe to write my exam so uh, my father came in and uh, told that okay I did uh, have a scribe for my exam I did write my exam I got 78 percentage because of my ability to understand my concept and uh, capability to understand the concept and capability to answer the questions orally. But uh, that was overseen by the ability of writing because I had a scribe. A scribe is uh, people to know. Uh, a scribe is a person I tell and they write. So my father didn't accept that, uh, saying that end of the day, someone wrote it for you. So I was actually shattered because he told this because I got uh, in first time in my academic life, I've got 78 percentage to pass. And that actually may, may, may kind of uh, um, is a very uh, difficult time. And, uh, and I was very upset about the whole thing. And my uh, mother came and asked me, what is happening? What happened to you? So uh, I did get good marks, but still uh, Appa says that someone wrote for me. 
so that time she kind of uh, told this uh, as a uh, statement where in she she he is a md of a company and having two uh, pas to kind of administer all his emails so they are all having the ability to write and read and assist him but his capability is only made him a managing director so what you should do is you should improve your capability the abilities can be supported by many other people around you which is the skill set reading writing or anything on that sort you know when you go up the ladder it's always about uh, envisioning the bigger things and uh, finding the right resources to uh, support you in different uh, areas and different streams if only we kind of battle the child saying that uh, battle any kind of individual saying that you are not able to read or write today i think so reading writing is something which is not everyone does it every day and the computers are ha half the words are already typed to the computer because it is auto text and so on so in that sense yeah reading writing is definitely a must but uh, that does not define a person's ability and uh, the capability of that individual that seemed to be a long road now what are the you know um, difficulties that you encountered and what gave you the courage to actually push even forward so difficulties encountered is basically this only i only wish i was a blind person that everyone in the world can uh, understand my difficulty but uh, since i am having the vision and uh, i'm able to converse everything and i'm able to kind of uh, portray myself i am intelligent yes i am intelligent but it's only when it comes to reading writing i might be dumb but that uh, that understanding is where i feel the most uh, i'm like talking for the children out there today uh, i'm heading a company so uh, uh, no one can question me but when i am i'm just recalling my childhood days and uh, i so how wish someone understands okay this child is bright only that this child is not able to read or write so the brightness is uh, not defined by the child's reading writing ability so that is always a difficulty is where i face and i think so still now also every kid out there would would have that challenge uh, to say uh, am i am not able to write so why can't you write everyone else are writing no this is the statement everyone gives and that actually is a contradictory Uh, to the child's everyday uh, struggle you know you please for you please push yourself to do so and so on that will never happen it will not at all motivate a person to actually do it when you are not able to do it uh, genuinely so uh, on top of that how what it motivates so why why a person why, why i have co come across this is there was one person all my life she she just believe me as as whatever i was saying like for instance when i uh, go out for an exam uh, i will i will finish it and i will come and all my friends all my teachers will say i know they all know my result that i'm going to fail but i my mother will ask me so what is your marks and i will say i'll get 101 marks very good she'll also make me gulab jamun that evening but issue is she also knows deep inside my her heart that i'm not going to pass but that confidence what she had in me actually made me drive through and want to kind of uh, uh, prove the world that yes i can why because at one point of time my cousins were telling i don't think so uh, your son will ever pass 10th and to their dismay i became a lecturer in the same uh, college which they could not continue their uh, un, uh, post graduation or undergraduate so that was a give back i could give to the society says that yes your child cannot do it so but for that i feel the fundamental support is the one person in life should be like blindly supporting you i think so all the mothers or fathers someone one person can be a good cop and bad cop but one person to a dyslexic child a child who is having reading writing challenges that one person should be a person who just uh, holds on to them come what may how much dark the road is still you will hold on and finally they will actually 
see the big light uh, outside actually you know speaking your mom has been such a strong hold to you and uh, when i was actually reading about dyslexic thinking i recently came across uh, dyslexia uh, i mean linkedin having added dyslexic thinking to be a skill and when i wanted to know what it meant i went on to dictionary.com which gave me a reference stating that it was a problem solving approach what are your thoughts on this arun so dyslexic thinking uh, so what is uh, the meaning saying to you in dyslexic thinking what is what are all the other meanings of the word it says it's a problem solving approach it gives uh, another you know it gives you answers and it helps you think in a different manner these these are the appropriate synonyms that we're giving <clears throat> so basically uh, a dyslexic thinker or uh, the, the dyslexic thinker what would what would be the barrier in their everyday school life i like anyone who's seeing this video today um uh, so the everyday school life when you are asked to read you will read when you are asked to write you will write when you are asked to write your exams you will do so there is uh, there you might actually not have any challenge you know but for a dyslexic thinker from the school itself there will be a challenge so when you are asked to read how to not able to read and escape from class so you need to be create that so you will be asking for a bio break or you will change uh, uh, seats and sit and make sure that you escape from that particular uh, situation like all that is basically creating alternative uh, patterns to actually escape that situation you know so that way uh, always and then uh, then for instance uh, for me today also if i meet someone and i am not able to kind of uh, 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 spell their name because uh, in india spelling names is uh, it's a very humongous thing you know someone will have a uh, different different names you know and uh, spelling might not be correct so today i can go to true color enter their name and the name comes and then i will say so these are all the alternative uh, means and ways of methods you can actually overcome your difficulty so here what is dyslexic thinkers are thinkers are who are always feen uh, the always the they go against the wave like everyone else could actually read and write and these these people could not so what they will do they will listen and learn so like that they will always have uh, how to say alternative patterns so recently uh, this ekna um, uh, world economic forum there's one article uh, there is a scientific proving thing that dyslexic mind is thinking differently so if you if you kind of recall the guy who made uh, uh, cars affordable is henry ford and that guy uh, like when when the person uh, everyone were only looking at affordable people only buying a car and stuff like that but here this uh, this person made it so affordable because he had a um, what is it kind of a conveyor chain approach to build the car and make it sim- uh, make it more cheaper and so on so that was one and uh, the most inspiring uh, dyslexic in my view is uh, walt disney so why walt disney is uh, the guy who created this whole solution is when you and like the whole world was looking only portraits like you draw a person and you make as an art or you draw a scenery and you make as an art no one could ever imagine a donald duck or a mickey mouse or something like that which is out of the world and uh, he kind of created like he kind of created that whole world to it uh like that uh, there's another artist who is a dyslexic who kind of uh, did that so so i feel dyslexic thinking today is a need of the art why because there are a lot of uh, uh, global challenges there are a lot of uh, development challenges or sustainable challenges and so on and these people because from the from their school life or from their very young age itself they'll always find reasons to or uh, kind of uh, situations to overcome it so uh, this big challenge when it is given to them also they'll find one pattern to actually uh, change it like for instance i can proudly say today d learners is a, a a platform helping a lot of parents to identify their children to uh, in, giving intervention for the children at their own homes this i can say this is a 
solution for the problems all what I faced. Why? Because as you asked me how many schools I changed and what was your feeling, the final feeling was after seven schools, I was sent to a Kielpok mental hospital to get my self-assessed. So that time I got even more anxious. Oh my God, okay, this is the eighth school, but this is not looking like a school even. So that was actually the, uh, uh, the situation I that hit me, my reality. And today, that's why D-Learners is born, wherein a screening can be happening at their own homes. And it, yeah, it took a lot of time and a lot of journey to come here. But still, that creativity, I feel, that is what is the dyslexic thinker's ability. And the same thing when I was asked to go to point A to point B to point C to for every tuition to for every remedials, Today, we are creating a platform to actually do that at their own comfort of their homes. Again, that is my own experience as a dyslexic thinker and creating a product or a platform to the same. So I feel this is what is dyslexic thinking is and uh, making uh, problems to create a solution. Like another uh, uh, beautiful example, as you you can uh, browse through Richard Branson, Sir Richard Branson, who's the founder of Virgin Air. So when, uh, when, when he uh, was running a record company and he wanted to have start an aviation business, and that time British Airways was the best, that was the only monopoly airlines in uh, it's UK. It's So that actually made uh, a British, uh, uh, so breaking through British Airways was a huge, humongous task. And this guy was not able to kind of have that uh, kind of uh, investment and so on. So what brilliantly he did is he went to Boeing and he didn't buy the aeroplanes. He kind of uh, leased it from them. So which means uh, I'm not buying your aeroplane. Whichever aeroplane is like uh, lying there in your yard, can you kind of, uh, uh, can I just use it for rental? And uh, whatever profits I get, I we both can share it. So till that time, it was always, uh, British Airways buying an aeroplane and uh, kind of uh, flying it and getting money and so on. So this way that uh, investment cost was reduced. Because of that, he was having very cheap airline airfares. So that was a huge, uh, uh, huge blow for uh, British Airways that time. So this kind of uh, different thinking, uh, like Steve Jobs created the whole, today the era of uh, touchpad, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, cute, cute keyboard. That uh, that keyboard itself is not there, no. It is all touch pad, touch screen today. So, but the touch screen technology was even before uh, discovered by another company. Uh, but uh, he made it so marketable and more fancy when it is uh, an iPhone. And today iPhone meaning only has uh, no, no uh, that is touch screen. But actually, another company, uh, I think so Sony Ericsson uh, initially cracked the touchscreen model. So, but this, uh, he was a marketing genius and he's a, who is a dyslexic. He made the whole world think that iPhone only discovered I touchscreen. So, that I feel all these people, you know, uh, they are people who like uh, a, a, a very good, uh, very famous director is also the same. And uh, our own Nandakumar IRS, who is uh, who's an Indian, who is now the Joint Commissioner of Income Tax in Tamil Nadu. So how he attempted his exams. So he, whenever he tells me this, I was, I was always thrilled to hear it. So uh, he will only have uh, words which is important and he will kind of uh, draw diagrams for the answers. Like a, a pie chart or a, or is it a mind map or something like that? He will only have, draw diagrams for his answers. In he kind of cracked the civil service. So which means uh, so there is a person who also cracked civil service who's a dyslexic. But uh, today, if you see him, you, 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 once you meet him is enough. You he will kind of put you into your uh, call list, and uh, every day he will sing. He will write a quote. He will, uh, he will, he, he's a very multifaceted person and he goes, uh, kind of talks to many people to uh, motivate uh, others also to do the same. 
so it's basically i feel uh, let's not boil down to a point wherein a child is not able to read or write is only the whole life is depend on them, on that reading writing is important but it is not the the world outside it is beyond that so that way if we kind of uh, give these children that nurturing strength to do something else which makes them confident then the reading writing will also come along but if you we kind of stamp those children saying that unak reading e varla ni poite how are you going to do other things unak writing e varla how are you going to do other things because there is one uh, dyslexic writer who is a very akata kristi is a dyslexic but she is a writer and how how basically she, she had a scribe and uh, she kind of uh, visualized stuff even more better uh, and kind of created uh, a path to actually express herself and uh, people could have edited her books and uh, books could have come out so a dyslexic person can also be a writer is what uh, but uh, agatha actress many people would have come across her books so so that way uh, that's what all i say is dyslexic thinking is basically in the west it is celebrated but in india still we look at reading writing and gauging the child by just reading writing is where we lose it is what i feel so yes are moving to the next why do you believe it is essential that people become aware of the importance of identifying children with these difficulties at an earlier age so early age is definitely a important thing why because when a child is uh reading or learning to read or write uh, which is first standard and kg first standard lkg ukg and so on that time itself if you are a, if we are able to kind of teach them the right uh, uh, methods of learning for as a dyslexic child so to them it would definitely be a a, a plus why because we, you can learn phonic sounds or how to syllabicate it how to read it uh, in all these remedial measures you can actually uh, give them only when the child is identified early so uh, i do not believe in identifying the child and labeling the child i uh, that's why in our platform also we never kind of label any child in our reports i am very strong believer in that and uh, here it is identification is just identifying this child might have reading writing challenges so why can't we give the right uh, other different tools to make the child execute it very well or better so in that way that uh, early identification is a first uh, uh, win to actually execute early intervention so in the early intervention would be when other kids uh, uh, spell uh, or read naturally and these children are not able to decode it like for instance frankly what would happen is t h e A, a, a normal person can read it the but uh, for a dyslexic child when they are very young it will be t h e what is t h e t h e so that is why because they are not able to decode the words that sound is what is the issue so when the child is in the first standard itself that sounds is been taught to them today i think so phonic uh, phonemic uh, uh, learning and all is happening in uh, junior schools i think that's good but more to it remedial ways of methods and teaching is also made to the child before sixth standard itself that way the child will actually uh, be able to read write uh, better and uh, that will enable the child to have that confidence to go to the higher grades but sadly what actually happens is uh, as parents will say okay next year he will study In the following year he will study and it will just push on and we will not uh, you know he is not reading or she is not reading they will kind of put to different different tuitions max tuition science tuition and all those things the uh, parents or anyone who is taking care of the child more worried about the completion of the mo- notes and so on they actually forget the skill what the child is acquiring that i feel when it is identified early you uh, today you just google you have a lot of things to learn from yourself and execute your child or you have a lot of organizations like ours or anyone else also to help the child to learn the way they can so it is not about uh, 
the child is not learning i always tell my uh, our special educators and anyone in the platform to that is it is about the way we teach them should make them learn and it is not the complaining of why the child is not learning or my child is not learning so that is the difference and all that would make a very huge difference when the child is identified early so do you think it's a shame to be labeled as a dyslexic arun so today you should actually be happy to say i'm a dyslexic thinker because the whole world is looking at uh, I, I, because linkedin has a as you mentioned linkedin has a, a skill profile like as a engineer as a architect and so on dyslexic thinking is a skill today so why should not we not uh, uh, kind of uh, tell proudly that i am a dyslexic thinker but the point here is that also needs to have the time like for instance the child cannot do that because all other children would actually bully them uh, but uh, if only we are able to kind of identify them early give them the right uh, intervention give them the right support that will actually give them the confidence saying that i am a dyslexic thinker but though i will be able to read or write well so i need little cha- little support here and there but otherwise i will be able to perform so that confidence uh, if parents and uh, teachers or special educators are able to give then i feel we are actually pa- cre- creating a path for a better future what is one thing that you believe drove you this far from the arun i see today to the arun before so one thing drove me this far is the failures what i faced why because uh, every a regular person might not actually face this many failures imagine uh, you go to class and you are not able to read is a failure you are attempting to write from the board is a failure when you are attempting to write an dictation word uh, though you know the word but uh, the whatever uh, spelling you write uh, uh, the teacher is not understanding uh, that is a failure and when you come back home and uh, when you want to ki- want to kind of go play and uh, your parents say that no you need to study because already you are weak so that is a failure then uh, every time so these are all very subtle failures which actually a regular person would not actually go through so that uh, so these many failures would uh, either break the person or make the person and for me uh, luckily it is made me but for many other it actually breaks them that is where the uh, school dropouts so that is where they kind of uh, do other things apart from uh, uh, kind of studying and all those things that makes a huge difference no so the i feel what failures made me is because there was a parent uh, particularly a mother who believed in me so uh, uh, and there were few teachers who believed in me so these people only uh, actually stuck me back or else i was broken only because every every day you go through the same thing no you will you will keep bre- you you keep breaking about yourself saying that see uh, you are not able to read you are not able to write because in that school time reading writing is is the ultimate thing but when it is after school or after your corporate life and all the reading writing is one part of your day because you can uh, assign it to others and so on as my ma- mother envisioned i have now too many people to write for me or whatever i don't know like i know a lot of people have joined from my office also so they all kind of create this whole uh, content for us and so on so that way uh, that is today but i feel the all these failures or making or breaking the person is not dependent on the child it's only dependent on the parent a teacher or a relative or someone who makes gives the confidence to the child yes don't worry i am there i believe you you will do well so these are simple words but it should be constant and that constant words will actually make the child imagine uh, this is only the difficulty so the difficulty is when others uh, do that very effortlessly and these kids cannot which means that they don't want to it's not that they cannot so that anyone can accept that 
make sure that uh, no problem that's not that great you do other things well so these kind of tap would actually make the person and not break them thank you arun i hope that by now the term dyslexia has taken a new and a more positive meaning moving to the audience the platform is open you can now uh, use the chat box or unmute to ask queries so very much a part of dyslexia it's a, uh, to tell the fact is uh, the child's intelligence or the ability of thinking is not defined by the child's spelling skills agree disagree agree but that is how they are you know the marks and everything that is how it is being the child is judged in the school yeah so today there are a lot of the different boards are giving a lot of exemptions so when you kind of uh, you can get a scribe for your 10th and 12th and uh, if you ask a question then future they he should write no yeah you can have a computer to assistive tool to actually write for him or something like that but that is actually another debate altogether but here uh, one time the spelling occurs and next time it was not happening is definitely a thing which for all kids would happen but the point here is we can actually make it uh, make the child learn better in a remedial way it's not about rote learning wherein you uh, type it 10 times 20 times uh, write it 10 times 20 times and learn it but uh, using syllabification or using a, some other kind of a pictorial representation or coloring uh, the different letters so make a, make the child uh, have a different way of learning so make the color uh, make the uh, if it is syllable like pro duck so pro can be another color duck can be another color process a uh, pro deuce so de uh, that uh, the, the, the the words which is forming uh, pro produce or process so all that can be different colors and make him realize pro is always the standard thing so all these are only remedial education is what i feel i feel there are a lot of uh, special educators also in the call so um, uh, jarna can second me and so on so these ways the child would be able to learn better but that does not mean that child is forgetting it is not okay. forgetfulness it is just that that is the difficulty of a dyslexic mind like they cannot recall spellings and read words that is a fundamental yeah. problem so but that does not factor in the child's intelligence or memory that is not about memorizing it memory will be very uh, if you kind of tell him that okay inge vandu his toy is there kept or something that and all he will remember and he will take it or he or she i don't know but the point is uh, that is not uh, pertaining to the memory of the child because you mentioned that he is not remembering so memory is not at all uh, connected to this it is more about uh, the the ability of re recalling spellings is if we teach them a different way the child will actually able to recall okay actually now my son is in third standard so i see whatever you were talking about your challenges i see the same thing in my son as well when your child is a prodigy he will do well but <laughs> you should be the mother for like for me my mother like that you you should be the mother who never gives him up yes this is one lesson which i got to know because i easily get frustrated because he's not remembering spellings and i get so frustrated when it comes to studies so this is one thing i really learned from your interview that i i should be the one that one person in his life maybe that is how he will be able to overcome his challenges very true so it is that good yeah. to know you sir. thank you thank you ma'am so basically if uh, you are able to have an at risk screening test or something which is used by uh, uh, dlearners platform or anywhere else 
you first identify that that is the issue or not. If that is the issue, you can actually go to talk to the parents, a teacher saying that, see, my child is having this difficulty. So, uh, so we can together support my child to actually do well. So it is not that uh, uh, let labeling at this point is good because for your child, when the teacher, uh, so the teacher will stop kind of expecting the things what he is not able to. So he is, he'll be uh, relieved, you know, like go stand, stand in front of the class and read is definitely not going to happen. Yeah. So that way he will, he will not be told that. So what he will be told is he will like, uh, he'll be told, okay, uh, you have a support, uh, a, stud, uh, a friend of yours prompting to read. So let him read and a friend of his uh, can also read along or prompt him whenever he's struggling. He can struggle to a smallest word like uh, thought. So, okay. but the point is, I uh, thought, meaning he will read it and he will complete the sentence. That way he'll be happy and the, the teacher should, can clap and uh, make him uh, feel better or something like that. So that is, I feel uh, at this point, labeling is good. Oh, okay. okay. So that you need not worry about it, but, uh, but the, uh, you should kind of uh, tell the teacher that uh, at this journey, you and me are sailing the same boat to make my child a better person. And uh, you please support him to do so. Okay. Thank you so much for it. So I would like to end this session with uh, one last question. So Aru, what do you think is your dream? Your so friend? my dream uh, is actually a very simple dream, like making children uh, capacitated at their own homes. And wherein every child uh, who is having reading, writing difficulty should not be labeled as dyslexia or any kind of term, but actually being empowered at their own homes by their own parents using platforms using technology and not pulling kids uh, to point a to point b to kind of give them the intervention or give them the identification certificate and so on but actually make the child uh, as as you are buying a glass when when you're not able to see uh, properly you just go to a uh, now there is lens cart and a lot of other places wherein the optimization is just inside the so inside the particular uh, what to say uh, the shop itself so that much of stigma free uh, environment for uh, wearing a glass today but 20 years 30 years before if you wear a glass it is always uh, your kept names soda booty and all those things you know that stigma free environment is what i'm looking at and uh, if that works i feel a school themselves should say this child is having reading writing difficulty okay i will uh, hear his answer and not make him write so that makes a huge uh, level of difference in every school every child's life why because they will start thinking okay my knowledge is more valuable rather than my reading or writing that actually is my dream and for that, if uh, such platforms like D-Learners is becoming uh, a, a platform which is having about 35 million children, then we will start uh, kind of dictating government or state governments to do the same thing. So see, reading is not a matter or writing is not a matter. So you can make oral education a norm in a normal school too. And today when you are wanting to get exemptions or second language exemptions or extra time and so on, the child is literally harassed because the child should go to a mental hospital or a, a, Kielpok, mental, a Kielpok or go to a Stanley or go to a Nimans or Nipmed or somewhere wherein these children see the other children uh, there and these children do not have that mental uh, maturity to say that okay I am different from them they will only start realizing I think so I am also like them uh, for my brain also something wrong so this would be their uh, observation from the situation. So I want to totally negate that situation and make sure that from their own house, like an app should kind of assess the child and say that your child has this difficulty and that should go, that report should go to the teach, uh, school. And from that same day, the school should adopt a different method of teaching to the child or different method of an uh, assessment to the child so that the child will actually be more happy and uh, understood and this is my dream i hope so we are traveling towards it uh, slowly we will get to it
Thank you so much, Arun. Hope your dream and your mission comes true. And uh, parents, in the chat box, we have left the feedback form. As part of the Giving Back to Our Society series, um, your feedback is most welcome. And uh, we will see you again in the next week with another insightful um, session as such.